In the past 24 hours, I've unfollowed over a thousand Twitter accounts. The question is why? I've been studying how to do a few things this year. I've got goals in 2024. One of them is to simplify my life, declutter, remove a lot of the mental noise that gets at us in this life. And a big part of that is social media writ large, all platforms. I've already taken a few moves to clarify and simplify that. One of the things that was just kind of a bother to me was Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it these days. I took a look at it. I have something like 300 some followers. A lot of them are bots and kind of weird accounts that never post and things like that. Not sure about them. But I noticed that I was following over 1,100 Twitter accounts, many of which never post, many of which post things that are not value added to me. Followed a lot of Buckeye football and, and Browns accounts. Followed some political accounts, followed some kind of deep thinker accounts. A lot of it just wound up being a time suck for me and a net negative. I would find myself going on Twitter and doom scrolling, as the kids call it. I would medicate boredom. I would medicate frustration with going on social media and saying, well, this will be this will be a mental break for me. And it turns out, as most of you are well aware, it's anything but a mental break. If anything, it is a further mental drain, which makes it even more difficult to get back to work or business or interpersonal relationships, whatever it is you're kind of putting off for a moment to take that break. So I'm recommitting to actual mental breaks, learning to do some different things, trying to read more physical books, preferably, just to further decouple myself from media and electronic device addiction. But I found that Twitter was in general a net negative for me. And, and that was even with a lot of positive accounts that do tend to try and stay away from the uber sarcastic and biting ones. But I just looked at it and said, man, 1100 seems like a lot. And when I started going through and just unfollowing everything that I felt like was not contributing to me in a positive way, things that just were kind of sarcastic, funny things, or making fun of other people or dumping on political figures, what have you. I just found like it was the vast majority of them wound up being over 90% of the accounts I was following. By the time I was done unfollowing accounts, I was down under a hundred that I was following. And even those hundred, I'm not hundred percent sold on all of them. Some of them are personal friends and family, but I feel that I need to commit to things that are moving me forward in a positive direction. And that brings me to the biggest reason why I'm unfollowed over 90% of my Twitter follows. And that was, I am a producer, not a consumer. This manifests itself in so many things in our lives, being a consumer, being treated as a recipient of stuff, electronic media, we, we sell our attention for pennies on the dollar, we sell our time to video games, little phone distractions, social media kind of garbage. And it, it's a net negative for us as a society. It's a net negative for me as a person, certainly a net negative for me as a professional, as a businessman, as a child of God, as a, as a husband, a father, all of these things. And so what I've found is I need to recommit in 2024 and this is a resolution that I've still kept, recommit in this year to being a producer, not a consumer. I talked about this on LinkedIn a few weeks back and I made a, made a funny meme, go, go figure, with the, uh, the House Greyjoy Kraken, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, and it said that there were, the words of House Greyjoy is, we do not sow. Totally different meaning. It means they're raiders and they go and just pillage and take what they want. But I changed it to, we do not scroll. 
and I talked about that, my commitment to, in 2024, being or becoming a producer, not a consumer. And that is my commitment on all platforms that I am going to commit to producing more than I consume, more than I read. And when I read, when I consume, it's something that's going to make me better. And it's funny because there were groups of accounts that I was following. There were Catholic groups, there were Christian groups. And I found that even those wound up not educating me, not making me better for the most part, so some exceptions. But for the most part, it's a lot of looking for cheap clicks and likes, dunking on each other, correcting each other in kind of nasty and snarky ways. And that's not who I want to be anymore. I'm committed to, on all social media platforms, producing first. And when I learn, I don't even want to use the word consume anymore because that's not what I'm doing. When I learn, I'm going to learn from people that show me how to do better in my own life. And so on Twitter, the handful of accounts that I've retained, Justin Welsh. I know that Justin Welsh has a ton of haters out there. And you don't have to necessarily buy his courses or subscribe to his philosophy. But you do have to respect the way that the man has succeeded across many, many social media platforms and Twitter being a big one couple of fitness experts that I love their advice, but I certainly respect their, their game as far as producing on social media. Dan Go is a big one. There's one named Cortez, and, and his first name's escaping me. I want to say it's Richard, Richard Cortez. You don't have to, again, you don't have to agree with the things that they're selling, but I learn from both what they're selling and what they're teaching for free and also the way that they go about it, their method. And that's what I'm studying. In my own domain, in data analytics, Alex Freeberg and Ken G. Uh, Freeberg just seems to have the Midas touch across all platforms. Of course, that Midas touch is born of just thousands of hours of hard work and production on YouTube, and then that translated onto other platforms. I, I learn from the man every time he puts out a piece of content, regardless of platform, and I'm trying my best to follow in his footsteps. Ken G, kind of a different direction, much more about the philosophy of how to, how to think, how to work, how to get things done. But their, their content is immaculate, both of them. The, the, their pursuit of their goals is what I admire and aspire to, and the way that they go about it, the way that they create. And so if there's a moral to the story, you don't have to do what I do. I, I don't ever sit here and advocate, hey, follow exactly in my path. I'll, you know, I'll give you the step-by-step -step instructions. That's not what I'm here for. What I'm here for is to explain my process and the things that I'm working on and why. If that makes sense to you, great. I see a ton of people out there that are just, they're just unhappy down to their core. It seems to me as I observe from outside. And a lot of that unhappiness is this blue screen in front of their face and the amount of time they spend there and the content that they bombard themselves with is a net negative for them. So I urge you today, if you're, if you're at all interested in following in my footsteps, trying to copy my journey, I hope that I'm reaching behind me and pulling some people for, forward just like these pioneers have done for me. I'm pointing, of course, to my board that you can't see. If you're interested in following my example and doing as I do, God bless you if you are. Take some time today to think about what you consume in all forms, all of this electronic things that we bombard ourselves with and ask yourself, is that a positive? Is that strategic? Are you thinking about what you're feeding yourself because you're feeding your eyes just as surely as you go into that kitchen and feed yourself healthy food or you feed yourself garbage. Put some thought into that today. I would urge you to be a little bit more strategic about the things that you casually allow into your mind today. That's what I've got for today. Semper Fidelis and I'll talk to you later.